Hey photographers, Lisa Langell here, and I want to talk to you about a simple tip that you can do that will increase your hit rate with your birds in flight, animal tracking, and more. If you want sharp focus, if you want your camera to track those birds beautifully, here's your tip. That simple tip is to upgrade the firmware in your lens. It's probably not something you may have even thought about. And not all lenses even offer that option, but Tamron's professional lenses do. And this allows you to improve the functionality of the lens, better communicate with the camera, and overall get the best out of your gear. So you'll wanna check any of your lenses to see if they need an upgrade in the firmware. Most of us do it to our camera bodies, and that's a normal thing, but not many of you may realize the firmware and the lens is also really important. And the good news is that we can do it in two minutes or less. So I own both the Tamron 50 to 400 millimeter for Sony E-mount and the Tamron 150 to 500 for Sony E-mount, and I'm shooting with my Sony A1. And I've had these lenses for approximately eight months. But what I didn't realize is that there was more that I could get out of them. I had no idea because these lenses have performed really, really well for me. Tracking birds in flight and keeping those images and those subjects sharp and beautiful hasn't been a problem. So when I was asked by Tamron to test out these lenses using the new firmware, I was trying to figure out how I could do so while factoring out the variability of my own skill as a photographer. And so what I thought I would do is, first of all, I've shot millions of frames of birds in flight and animals moving over the course of 40 years as a photographer in one shape or form or another. But I thought that would be my constant, which yes, there's some error in that, but that's the best I can do. It's not like a situation where I'm photographing a newspaper and I can see exactly the focus and all of this, the conditions are very controlled. This is wildlife. This is out in the middle of you know, the wilderness, and I'm photographing birds coming in and out at all kinds of different angles and lighting and more. So I'm gonna be the constant, and we're gonna put these cameras and lenses through a variety of conditions to see how they perform. So a few things that I did that you should know. I continually used the animal tracking in this camera, and I set my tracking at wide area tracking or sometimes center point tracking or some of those other tracking specific settings. I then tested under a variety of conditions, but as you know, this camera can shoot up to 30 frames per second. I didn't want to show you 30 frames that I caught in one second. I wanted to show you how over several seconds as that bird or animal moved, I could still maintain that focus. And so you're going to see the entire burst from the moment I caught focus on that, that animal all the way through to the end of the burst. And I'm gonna pan through that shot and show you every single image that I captured. And I will show you the raw, unedited, uncropped versions. And my setting on this camera to do so is at five frames per second. That slows that shutter down, the frame rate down, so that you can see it track over time. In this first example, I have a high contrast subject, a female northern harrier against a light gray sky. The contrast makes it easier for the camera and lens to focus, but the challenge is that it starts out as a very small bird in the frame, occupying maybe 1 25th of the frame. Gradually, she gets closer to me and she's at about 1 8th of the frame. And the entire time through this burst of 64 frames, she remains right in focus. This next test involved a crane coming in for a landing. So in this case, the crane crosses in front of a field of tall plants. The focus never wavers as the bird comes in for a landing among those other birds. So tracking a bird against a simple sky is an easier challenge for a camera and lens combo. But what's harder is when the background becomes varied. So I tracked this bird going across the sky and the background changes from a clear sky to busier backgrounds and so forth. This challenge was really successful. The entire time I locked focus and panned across the sky, all 20 frames were consistently in focus. So I showed you a busy background a moment ago. Now we're gonna introduce other birds. 
One of the challenges that cameras can have with the eye tracking is that it picks up on other subjects in the frame when you really only want it to track on one. So here's the results of this situation, and the focus remains throughout the entire pass, even to the point where I could hardly keep the bird in the frame any longer because it was so close. The next scene shows how the tracking remains on the bird, even though there are weeds in the foreground in front of the subject. The firmware update helped the camera and lens combo keep focus on the bird, ignoring any of those obstacles, which can often be a challenge in many focusing systems. In this next challenge, I wanted to photograph a group of birds and see how well it tracked those birds across the sky. And in this case, the focus continues to remain consistent. Every single frame is in focus. So in this next challenge, I wanted to test the focus when you have a really close subject next to the subject you want to track that might hijack that view. So it's often hardest, for example, when a bird small in the frame is flying above something else that can easily steal away that focus. Examples can be waves at sea or other birds in the scene or a field with plants. The camera can easily pick up on the undesired subject and drop focus on your intended subject, which is the bird. So in the following examples with this Northern Harrier, the Sony A1 and Tamron 150 to 500 for Sony kept focus across the burst of all 26 frames. So in this next challenge with the Northern Harrier, the bird was flying behind weeds in, my, in the foreground, right in front of me, and it was also flying very close to weeds in the background. So it was quite easy to have the camera potentially get caught up in focusing on one or the other set of weeds without tracking the bird. But in this case, the bird was flying and the weeds only caught focus for one out of the 23 frames that I had in that burst. If any of you have photographed birds for any length of time or animals, you know that when they're moving directly towards you, those face on shots, that can be some of the toughest challenges for your camera to maintain focus. And in this case, I tracked a sandhill crane flying directly towards me for 52 frames at five frames per second. Each of them remain perfectly in focus until the bird flies right overhead and out of the frame. I didn't zoom out to accommodate the bird as it got closer. I just stayed and tracked and focused. And the entire time, these images are in focus. I should also mention that I use back button focusing with my Sony A1 and I really prefer that for my focus tracking. This next challenge is somewhat similar to the last one, but in different directions. So just as tracking subjects moving directly towards the photographer demands a lot from your focusing system and lens, moving away from a photographer or changing directions mid-flight can also be challenging for the camera and lens to keep focus. So in this case, I tracked a sandhill crane flying away from me while also changing direction. The focus was stellar throughout the entire 36 frames. Subjects that accelerate or decelerate can often be a challenge for both the photographer and your lens camera combination. Keeping that focus is so challenging. In this example, not only does the focus remain consistent throughout all 89 frames between the flight, the changing of direction, and the landing, the focus even after the crane lands into a group of birds remains strong. Deceleration can be a challenge to maintain focus both for the photographer and for the gear that you're using. And in this case, the lens handled this beautifully. So 17 out of 19 frames were in focus, and those that weren't were because a large cluster of weeds intercepted that focus. And that's understandable, the bird threw, flew right through that thicket of weeds. But it only took three-fifths of a second for that bird to go through those weeds and then the camera pick up focus once again. 
This next test involves the 50 to 400 millimeter Tamron lens for Sony E-mount. And in this case, I was pulled back to that 50 millimeter side because I wanted to photograph a wider scene with a landscape. And just then I was with my group and a pack of javelina crossed right in front of us. It was such a delightful moment. And I loved this lens because I could go from photographing that wider scene to zooming out to about 323 millimeters so that I could photograph the javelina running. And in this case, it locked focus instantly from the time they appeared in the weeds to the left of me, to the time they crossed the road and tracked all the way to the right the entire set of frames was in focus. When downloading the lens utility for the Tamron 50 to 400 millimeter lens, you're going to go to either the support site or you can navigate right to downloads Tamron lens utility and this will be the link. You can choose to download software that will allow you to update your lens through your smartphone or you can read through the agreement here, come down here and read through the requirements for your specific computer, and then click Agree and Download for either Windows or Mac. So I'll click Agree and Save and Download it, and then you'll see it in the folder here. You can then double click it and run the application. I'm gonna choose English, and then I'm gonna accept the agreement, and then I'll click Next and Install. So I can go search for Tamron Lens Utility, and then I'm gonna hit the Start menu. The Start menu shows you how to get started with your lens. You can customize your lens, and there's functions for that. You can customize the lens functions while seeing the performance on the camera, or you can do the lens firmware update. This is what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and click Start. And if you don't have your lens connected properly to your computer via a USB-C cord, you will not be able to continue. So make sure that's connected and then click start and run the software. Click update to update the firmware from version one to two. Click okay, let the software run, and then click remove to remove your lens and cable and you're finished. So to sum it up, this has been an amazing experience. Lenses that were already excellent on a camera that's wonderful has just upped its game. I've been able to capture so many images in focus from beginning to end with maybe one to 2% at most that have been out of focus, no matter what the conditions I've put it through. I'm delighted and you will be as well. Thanks for watching. Go update your firmware and I'll see you out in the field.